Hello and welcome to another edition of Business and Financial Raw Talk, a no holds barred forum for leaders and innovators. And I am Luana Bradford, your host for this special Women's History Month edition of Business and Financial Raw Talk. Today we're going to talk about let's hashtag break the bias. And that is the international women's theme for Women's History Month. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to come on and speak to the audience specifically about, I felt it was very important, just as we did last year, to really celebrate and sit in the international theme of hashtag break the bias. And what I found is through my professional and career as a serial entrepreneur, 30 years as a serial entrepreneur, I noticed that our conversations, the critical conversations collectively were not really being had. Now, certainly there are a selection of people. There are a few that would get in the table, roll up their sleeves and talk about those real issues. And those are individuals that were known to spawn and spark movements, individuals that were known to elevate and rise at a, at a local, state, federal levels to pro promote uh, legislative changes. These were individuals that, will, that would travel to nations and, and create collaborations in order to advance um, things within society, things within communities, in order for people to elevate and live their best possible lives. But then I thought about the masses that are in the day-to-day -day and grind of life. And it's very easy for us to go home, sit at our dinner table, and have these conversations. And that's important, right? It's important for us to see the reality that surround us and even be willing to challenge it. But those of us that are in positions of influence, whether we are business owners, where we can help fuel the economy, where we can create jobs, uh, whether we're in leadership positions in our families, in our schools, in our churches, in our communities. It's important, especially for women, to come together and have those conversations as it relates to limiting beliefs, systems that will prevent us from elevating to the highest version of ourselves. And one of the things that I love is the quote by Shirley Chisholm that says, when they do not give you a seat at the table, then you bring your own chair. And the new generation has gone a step further to say, if they didn't bring you a seat at the table, don't even worry about bringing a chair to their table, create your own table, right? So when we're talking about this international theme of breaking the bias. We're talking about, we can have just a, a laundry list of what these biases are. They could be gender bias, pay bias, religious bias, uh, sexual orientation bias. Um, and the list can go on and on and on. And you may say, well, I'm not I don't have biases. I, I look at the world with very open eyes. I'm very accepting. But we all do. We all have those biases, whether they are conscious or unconscious. I want to give you a little example. So I want you to just pause for a moment, whatever you're doing. And I'm going to describe a scenario. And I want you to tell me what is the first thing that comes to your mind. You walk in the office and someone tells you that the CEO is waiting to meet for you. Right now, who is the CEO? Who do you imagine, who do you envision that CEO to be? Believe it or not, studies have shown that most women, the first thought, when you say the CEO of a major corporation, the first thought is, it's probably a man. Now, this is us as women. That's our first thought. Why is that? Because that those years of conditioning, or maybe even just what we've seen in our lived experiences, have shaped and influenced how we 
perceive the world. All right? Here's another example. You walk in the office and someone says, oh my goodness, person X was crying in your mind right now. What image did you get? Did you think first it must be a man or it's probably a woman? I share those very simple illustrations to tell you that throughout our lives, we develop these biases that very often are not founded on truth, but they're founded on our perception of the truth, our limited exposure, our maybe limited mindset of what is actually happening in and around us. Now let's think about how critical it is if we as women fail to come together in a successful way to have conversations that are going to shift the narrative as it relates to biases. One of the things that you've heard me talk about on this platform over and over and over again are the pay inequities that exist with women gender pay inequities. When we think about the suffrage movement and the push for women to have the right to vote, one of the large things on the ballot was we want to have equal pay for equal work. Okay, that was over a hundred years ago. And what are we still screaming? Equal pay for equal work. Why is there this chasm? Well, one of the things, if we as women really want to influence the narrative, if we want to shift the tides and start to lessen that gap that exists, then we are going to have to first be true to ourselves. See, we're going to have to change the narrative. Again, breaking the bias as it relates to what is the truth surrounding women and pan equity. We all hear women earn 80 cents on a dollar. Okay, but that's kind of lumping everyone together. But when we divide women into their respective ethnic and racial groups, right, you get a very different picture. So for every dollar that a white man earns in the United States, a white woman earns 80 cents which means she has to work an extra four months to earn what a white man earned in 12 months. But when we then turn and say, well, how are African-American sisters doing? Shifts a little bit. What we now see is that 80 cents has now decreased to 64 cents. So for every year, that a white man works and earns a, and earns a dollar, simple math. An African American woman needs to work an extra eight months. So pay parity for African American women isn't April 4th. It's August 8th. An extra eight months. Think about that. Now let's just pause right there. So when we're looking at African-American women and white women. And I love that Terry Lynn and I had a conversation on Choose the Challenge about this very topic. And we uncovered that there is almost a million dollar deficit in African-American women's earning potential compared to that of white women. Again, when we're talking about challenging the systems and breaking the biases, that even deals with us as women. And when we are placed in roles of responsibility where we can influence change, where we can um, change, change um, the, the tapestry of who we hire, making hiring practices uh, more equitable, looking at how we can influence the pay for our sisters. Are we doing that? Are, are we saying, well, we're here, but we're kind of going to keep things at status quo, but 
But on the sidelines, we're saying we want equal pay. We want equal pay. As we go to Hispanic women, that's 64 cents further declines to 50 cents. I don't know about you, but I don't have as an African-American woman, a hundred plus years in order to have pay equity with a white man. So this is why celebrating Women's History Month is so important. It is so important that we not only pause and spotlight the accomplishments and contributions that women around the world have made and are making for the improvement of society, the betterment of humanity. But we also have to say, what is not working? What is creating impediments? What is crippling us from rising at that exponential rate? What can we do today so that our future generation that's already looking at us and growing among us will be able to celebrate a more expansive lived experience because the opportunities are, are greater, right? Their, their chances for truly being the best version of themselves is there. I remember talking to uh, an individual who lives in Uganda and we were talking about the challenges, right? So again, we've got to a bias there, right? Let's break the bias as it relates to education and who gets priority when it comes to education in a family's household. Well, the priority is given to the men, right? To that boy child first, then the daughter second, maybe. Well, Uganda isn't the only nation like that. When we think about biases as it relates to our neighborhoods and communities, having access to health care, to education. There are so many around us in how we make decisions and how we navigate that are serving as obstacles, serving as roadblocks. Well, you may think, well, what are we supposed to do? How do we do this? Well, first you got to recognize that a bias may exist or that you may have several of your own. More than likely you do. And that's okay. It's recognizing it. And some may say, well, I got a blind spot. And that's very true. You may. But the more you engage with a diverse community of people in their backgrounds, experiences, cultures, attitudes, then your eyes begin to widen and you start to have a lot of aha moments like, hmm, okay. I didn't see it that way. I didn't think of it that way. And then you have to ask yourself, now that I have a better awareness and I realize now, I didn't know it was covered, but I realize now this, the blinders are off. This is how I was thinking. And this is how these thoughts influence my response or reactions to a situation. Now it is my responsibility to be accountable and to create change first within me and then to allow it to ripple without. But I have to be cognizant of it, recognize it, accept it, and then be willing to do the inner work. As John Asaraf often encourages us, the inner size to create that change that will then influence those shifts. I want to take this time to celebrate three amazing women who are part of the Celebrate You Women Embracing Wellness movement. And these three women during the pandemic rose up in a very unique way. Now, these are women who are among us, right? These, these women that we see every single day, but they saw something that made them a little uncomfortable a cha challenge where they were journeying and it challenged them in a way that they all three of them said, okay, I can sit here and acknowledge it exists and wait to see who's going to do something and do my rah-rah, cheer them along. Or 
I can say, no, I want to be a part of this change. I can use my seat of influence and create a greater sense of awareness, unity, collaboration that not only extends within the United States, but crosses the globe. So these three women who are walking among us, I salute you because not only have you and are you continuing to drive impact and to bang that drum that we need to break the bias, you are creating a resonating effect around the world. First person I want to salute is Trish Carr. Trish Carr is the co-founder of Women's Prosperity Network an international organization designed specifically to help women entrepreneurs elevate, expand in their impact, influence, and income around the world. Well, she and her two sisters, Susan Winters and Nancy Matthews, decided to create the Women's Prosperity Network because they didn't, and this is 16 years ago, didn't see an organization quite like theirs. And was truly creating a rich community of women supporting, elevating, and lifting up one another. Those of you may not realize that Celebrate You actually was born out of Women's Prosperity Network. I was a member and still am part of that amazing organization. And we are sister organizations. Iron sharpening iron. Celebrating each other collaborating at the right times, pushing forward with the same initiative, same end game in mind, but in different ways. Now you may say, okay, but a lot of people are doing that, Luana. So why Trish Carr? Well, because she dared to be different. She dared to do something that could have placed her credibility, reputation at risk. Um, her business, her relationships. And the bias that she challenged were those around racial inequities. Those unconscious biases that she said, I had some blind spots. I didn't realize what women of color have to go through as they are raising their children. The fear and concern that African-American women have when their children go out, of, go out of the home. The talk that we have to have to ensure that our children remain safe. She said all of her life, she has been an advocate for human rights, civil rights. But it wasn't until the unfortunate and tragic death of George Floyd where the whole world saw, and I think the whole world was spotlighted because of the pandemic, right? We're all at home. What else are we doing? Everyone's glued to the TV. But that moment was pivotal for her. She realized that she could no longer just sit and watch. She could no longer have these sideline conversations, but wanted to be an active participant as an ally, as an advocate for change. So what did she do to begin to break the bias within her community, within her circle that has now just rippled around the world? She started a show called Sister to Sister. A conversation, because if you know anything about the amazing Trish Carr, who, as I mentioned, is not only a celebrated co-founder of Women's Prosperity Network, but she's an amazing speaker, teacher, and best-selling author of a book called It's Just a Conversation. So she took all of her years of experience and expertise in the sales and conversational arena and said, I want to use my platform and my seat of influence to have those critical, uncomfortable conversations with women of color particularly African-American women. I want to spotlight their experience, their lived experience. And they're all different. 
but it's, I want to bring an awareness that they care for and have the same desires that every other woman has. But there are some challenges that they face that white women in America do not. She wanted to spotlight their stories. And some individuals may look at that and think, well, I feel that was a little exploitive. But no, it wasn't. See, when we know better, we do better. And by her having this critical paradigm shifting moment, Trish said, I can no longer just stand here. I have to use my platform, use my voice, use my position of influence, recognize the risk that may be there and be an avenue that starts to shift and create change that will challenge the narratives, that will challenge our mindsets and limited beliefs, that will enable us to begin to break the bias. Thank you, Trish Carr, for all you do. And I continue to celebrate and support you. Another individual I want to bring up is Audra Aiken. Audra is a Latinx woman who was skyrocketing in the corporate scene. But what she noticed is very often women were not represented in the way they needed to be. She noticed that women were kind of seen but not heard. She noticed that the challenge to bring that seat at the table, as Shirley Chisholm said, was beginning to get a, a little difficult to do the space to squeeze in was getting smaller. She noticed that women had were having conversations among themselves, but it wasn't rippling where all of corporate was aware of it. And she said, I can't sit and do this anymore. She felt, in her words, compelled to create a platform, to use her experience, and create a podcast called Women in the Arena, how, how appropriately titled. Because she felt that women were battling to have our voices heard, battling for representation, battling for equality. And she wanted to bring the voices of a diverse representation of women from around the world to tell their stories to talk about their challenges and hardships, but yet their triumphs. To be a platform that as other women are listening and gathering, and even men who are celebrating and supporting women could be encouraged and inspired by the stories that they heard. Her platform, her podcast, Women in the Arena, was another brilliant initiative born out of the pandemic. And today she is interviewing women from around the globe, helping them to showcase and spotlight their stories, talking about those difficult and challenging times, exposing some of those dark moments of the soul, leaning into how they were able to tap in, tune into that incredible internal strength to defy the odds and rise above showing women around the world that there are examples among us every day of women, as she says, doing extraordinary things in plain sight. But when we have biases, unfortunately, puts blinders on and we're unable to recognize all the brilliance that is around us. So Audra, thank you. Thank you so much for Heeding the call, feeling that tap on your shoulder and saying, you know what? I can no longer sit here and do nothing. It's time for me, as John Lewis said, to find that trouble, that good trouble, that necessary trouble, to shake things up, to allow women to voices to elevate and to be celebrated and to be a part of the movement that is breaking the bias. Thank you, Audra. And the final woman that I want to celebrate is Dr. Darashe Zorn. 
Dr. Duran Shazor is a powerhouse with her movement called I Am Her International. I Am Her International was founded about a year or two before the pandemic, but started to really build momentum during the pandemic. I Am Her, a movement designed to celebrate the woman, the femininity, the strength of who we are, our divine genius, our divine gifting, and our role that we have within the world. I Am Her International looks at women from different backgrounds and cultures and experiences, creating a community where we're coming together and sharing our stories. She began a collaboration of books called 31 Ways of Influence, which was built from the framework of the Proverbs 31 Woman. She has volumes one and volumes two, again, a, a compilation of brilliant stories. But they weren't just stories. It's like, here's a story, but now let me give you your steps for success. So they're teachable moments woven in to these stories. But then she dared to do something a little different. She linked it to international conferences. So you launch these books, this collection of stories of women rising up in different challenges in their lives, whether it was relationships, uh, your business, trying to find out what your purpose is, your finances, again, everything that comprises our existence as women, these books touched on. And then she developed an international conference that traveled to different countries, celebrating the authors, their message, and then touching our sisters in other countries. See, what Dr. Duranche did was she said, I see the challenges that we as women face. And one of those challenges is we have brilliance in all different areas all over the world. We need to start sharing our experiences. What the U.S. has been able to do and accomplish in some of the emerging nations are now going through those same challenges. Let's share our experiences. Let's share our tools. Let's share our processes. Let's share our resources so that they can get there faster. See, Dr. Duranche said, I want to be the bridge. I want to be a bridge of collaboration, of education, of inspiration, of elevation and celebration of women from around the world. I want to be a part of the change. That hashtag breaks the bias. So these three women, Dr. Duranche, thank you so much for your commitment and your dedication to women and our advancement. But these three women, Trish Carr, Audra Egan, and Dr. Duranche Zorn are examples that are among us that we can reach out and touch and talk to and collaborate with. And there are so many, many more. See, Celebrate You is another movement that blew up. It's just started to explode during the, during the pandemic. The original purpose of the Celebrate You platform was my company, the Bradford Group. We wanted to spotlight five women in business. We wanted to show women that other women would be willing to invest in them, that other women would be willing to step back and say, let's spotlight you. Let's financially invest in you. Let's bring community to you to give you that exposure. But let's bring community to you so we can create those amazing relationships, those sustainable relationships as we grow in our life and in our business. And now celebrate you. As I said, we are a sister organization of Women's Prosperity Network. And within Celebrate You, our belief that we can break the bias, we can do so by first starting with our mindset. We can first start with 
the very tenets of celebrate you, which is to love yourself and embrace who you are as a woman, to embrace all of you. Because we believe that when a woman is truly able to love, embrace, and celebrate herself, not only does she break those conscious biases, but those hidden unconscious biases that she may have that are directed at her. And when those shackles are broken, then she can truly be the change and the influence and the improvement of life for herself her family, the community, the nation, and the world. This Women's History Month, we will continue to bring messages, to bring uh, conversations around breaking the bias. I hope that you join me. No matter your gender, no matter your background, no matter your culture, no matter your your lived experience to help us collectively as humanity to shift those biases that are out there, to break them were it all possible so that we as humanity can expand and truly be the best versions of ourselves. Imagine, imagine what an amazing world that will be. It's not impossible as long as we realize that change first starts with me, with you. Do that inner size, challenge yourself, identify those biases, rise up, shake off those shackles, be a change agent, be an influencer. If there's no room at the table, create your table. Because it is our responsibility to lead a better world than we inherit. But change first starts with us. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this Women's Day special on Business and Financial Raw Talk. I am Luana Bradford. And I want to remind you that when your vision intersects with opportunity, success is inevitable. Until next time, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon.